comfortable. I'm gonna die here. What's happened to your window? Defender, I got an 88 year sentence without parole. With nothing to lose, escape was always my priority. I broke out of Mississippi State Pen once and got caught trying a couple more times. That's why they transferred me to the prison Supermax facility, a hellhole they call Unit 32. Roy was the most violent, the most cunning, and the most devious inmate that I had come in contact with. Hands out. Open your mouth. Wider. Bend over. Roy had escaped from basically every institution he ever been in. 32 was the ideal place for him. There's a class of offenders whose crimes are so serious and whose behavior is so violent that there was a need to build supermax prisons. What made Unit 32 different was the level of security that was present. You had the perimeter fencing with the razor wire. There were gun towers, and you had a perimeter patrol conducted by vehicles. Oh, my Lord. Most of the inmates were locked down 23 hours a day. You looking at what? Oh, yeah. Put yeah. them here, boss. Look, I'm on Within each building itself is a control tower, which permitted 360-degree vision of the individual cell units themselves. Put your stuff down and turn around. Back away. Get comfortable. You're gonna die here. I couldn't accept that. Because at Unit 32, I realized real quick, escape was a necessity. Dust to dawn, you're the most volatile and messed up people you'll ever meet. Every day you entered there, you felt like, well, this could be my last day. You You would have fires, you would have flooding, you would have inmates throwing feces on stab, you would have stabbings. Between the inmates with mental problems and gang-related disturbances, the place was in chaos. It was like torture. I never got no peace of mind or sleep. I had to find a way to escape, or Unit 32 would destroy me. something to fight the despair. I started working out three or four hours a day. It was like a drug. The 
lifted my spirits and got me thinking clearly. Being locked down almost 24-7, the first step of any escape had to be finding a way out of my cell. There was only one option. The window. It had a series of louvers. Each one encased a cut-proof steel bar. Cutting them was out of the question. But the frame encasing the bars looked like it was made of a weaker metal. Covering it all was a heavy-duty wire grill, which I had to remove before I could do anything. The chances of getting through the window were small. But I was gonna try. A friend of mine, in another part of the unit, had a bit that fit the screws on the window grill. He gave it to me by a third party. To use it, I needed a handle. But with the guards always watching, there was no way I could make one. Somehow, I needed to block the guard's view. Then one day it hit me. Some inmates hung sheets over the front of their cells during shower time, when the corridors were real busy. I did a test. I started doing the same thing to get the guards used to seeing it. That's prohibited. Anything that would block the view into a cell by a security guard is, is prohibited by, by policy and by procedure. Shower ran from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. most days. And my sheet hung there through these hours every day for probably two weeks straight. No one said nothing. I found a way to work on the window undetected. At last, I had a chance of busting out of this hellhole. With a sheet hanging over my cell front, the guards couldn't see in. So I could start making the tool I needed to escape. From the light fixture, I took two pieces of angle iron made of soft steel. Using broken blades from a pencil sharpener, I bored holes in each piece and fashioned an effective window screw tool. Now, I needed some hacksaw blades to try and cut through the window. get them, I had to have faith that at least one guard will get lazy, or worse. By keeping my eyes open, I found the guy I was looking for. Contraband gets into the prison any number of ways, including by guards and, uh, and employees. Because the job is low wage, the type of employee that you get on board is prone to corruption. After I'd approached the guy, he agreed to smuggle in some blades at 40 bucks a piece. I finally had everything I needed to work on the window. Welcome to the circus. Thanks. Around about this time, they moved John, J.W. Willard, next door to me. 
I knew JW through a mutual friend. I like the guy. Hey, JW, you hear me? He just tried to bust out of the prison and almost made it. Yeah, I hear you. How far did you get? Just outside the unit. That impressed me. I'm not a team player. Two men hey. meant twice the risks. Listen, I'm gonna bust out of here. So when JW told me he was about to try to escape again... You serious? Dead serious. I already got what I need. It was like a punch in the stomach. I just thought, if he goes first, there's gonna be a shakedown. Not close, but the exact same thing. I had no choice but to tell him about my plan. We gotta do this thing together. And agree to work together. We talked through every detail. Alright. First, cut through our cell window. Squeeze out at night. Gotta make use of that thin strip of shadow on the side of C block. Then, we gotta make it about 50 yards across floodlit territory. Covered by gun towers and those cameras. And we gotta pray that the guards on duty that night are dozing. Use a hacksaw to cut through the first fence. through the second fence. The final hurdle would be getting past the perimeter patrol. The plan bordered on insanity. We were desperate enough to try it. Now we were ready for action. We waited for shower time and got going. I could never see what JW was doing in the cell next door. I just had to hope he was being as careful as me. My heart was pounding. Any second, I expected a takedown team to come crashing into my cell. section around the end of one of the louvers to see if the entire cut-proof bar could be removed. Bad news. The end was sunk into an equally cut-proof steel frame. I had another idea. The louver controls were in a metal box under the window. I could cut the top off Remove the outer panel, which was held in place by screws, and squeeze out under the bottom cut-proof bar. JW. Yeah? We're gonna have to cut under these bars. This would require a lot of work over a few days. Each stage done in unison by me and JW. I started cutting. I got real absorbed in the work. Suddenly, I heard, Harper, take this sheet down. My heart just stopped. I'm holding the hacksaw blade. The wire frame is off the window. And now they're gonna search my cell. Harper, take it down now. It was my nightmare come true. Take it down now! They were yelling at me to take the sheet down. If I did, they'd see I'd been working on my cell window. But I had no choice. Sorry. Standing there was a warden. I thought, I gotta keep them looking at me, not the window. So I said, 
Sorry. I didn't hear you. Any second, I thought the warden was gonna say, What's happened to your window? But he didn't. He just turned and walked away. The relief I felt was overwhelming. I had to sit down and gather myself. Next day, as soon as shower started, JW and I were back at work. I was finally ready to lift the lid off the control box. I was thinking, boy, once this is off, I can bust out. But underneath was a nasty surprise. Another cut-proof bar. It was like a kick in the teeth. The plan wouldn't work. But then I got to thinking. Under the surprise cut-proof bar, I could see yet another bar. Thick and coarse looking, definitely low-grade steel. Under that was a louver control mechanism. All this could be cut, leaving a space large enough to squeeze through if we removed the panels on both sides of the control box. All the stuff in the control box came out faster than expected. After a while, there were just a few small cuts left on the inside panel. JW had gotten to the same point next door. All we had to do now was put everything back in place and choose our moment to bust out. I hid the cut marks which extended beyond the wire screen with a mix of coffee creamer and toothpaste. It was a perfect match. Two weeks after making the first cut, we were ready. We waited for the midnight count to finish. Now was the time. Everything had to be synchronized. But one of us would let the other down. I called out to JW. Step one! My heart was pounding. My senses on high alert. minutes to get the steel plates off. I lowered them to the ground outside. I tied two improvised lengths of string to the sheath. They were going to come in handy real soon. Step two. I slipped on red pants we had smuggled in from death row. Without them, the white stripes on our uniforms would show up real clear under the floodlights. I made a dummy out of clothes and old newspaper. Damn, it looked real convincing. Step three. I had a pack with a few supplies inside. I dropped it out the window. Same thing with the strings attached to the sheet. A towel covered the escape hole. Everything was done. I was nervous as hell, but we were past the point of no return. I squeezed out. It was tight. But it worked. Pulled the sheets down. 
they were up too long, the guards would get suspicious. It was hard to believe we were out of our cells. We blacked our faces with cream I made from burnt paper and hair grease. shadow on the ground against the building. That was our path for now. We moved slow. Real slow. I knew fast movement was more likely to catch someone's eye. Most of the officers are armed with semi-automatic carbines and they are authorized to use deadly force if necessary to prevent an inmate escape or a breach of security. It was now or never. We had to cross that stretch of totally exposed prison yard. inside was saying, get up and run, find some cover. But we kept crawling, yard by agonizing yard. It seemed to work. We reached the first fence alive. I started sawing. Once we slipped through, we were in the killing zone between the two fences. If we were caught here, bullets were going to start flying. The second fence. We were almost out. Suddenly, we saw the perimeter patrol. I just thought, we're busted. How they missed us, I'll never know. I was thinking, this is it. Guard, up in that tower. Do not look down now. We crept beyond the reach of the unit lights. still shaken from the adrenaline running through my body. Then it hit me. We'd just beaten the state's only supermax. As I was sitting in the office, the trays came off of the tier. And I was like, who did it meet? Roy Harper. They said, Roy Harper. And immediately, a bell went off. If Roy Harper had refused a meal, then I'm assuming he's on a hunger strike. So I'm going to try to find out what's the problem. Harper. Looking inside of the cell, you could actually see something that emulated a body. When I started rattling the bars and I didn't get any response, it began to eat at me and I said, this is just not right. I need to take down team. Unit 32C, cell 73. We gathered a takedown team, and we 
entered the sale. And we found the homemade dummy. You know, you've been in the system for X number of years and you never thought it would happen to you. Jackson to control, Jackson to control. Lockdown, lockdown. Come with me, come with me. Woodard, Woodard, get up. Woodard out of bed now. We started shaking down the building and that's when we discovered that Woodard was also at home. Jackson to control. Second escape prisoner. Cell 72, Woodard. When someone escaped, you definitely feel betrayed, belittled. You're trying to figure out whether you're going to have a job after today or not. What's your next step in life? What is your family going to do from this point on? We gotta get moving. Come on. It was later than we thought. If we didn't put the second part of our plan into action real soon, we'd be as good as caught. I knew it was real important to escape capture in the first 24 hours. That's when search parties flood the area around the prison. So my plan was to find a good hiding place. Just sit tight till things cool down. From a bridge over the creek, we ran downstream. No dog was gonna follow our trail now. After about a half mile, we crept into the thickest bushes we could find. If we could make it to nightfall, well, maybe we wouldn't be going back to prison anytime soon. JW and me had busted out of Mississippi State Pen. Now we had to stay hidden. We knew the cops would be everywhere. Calling all units. Two inmates have escaped from Mississippi State Pen. Roy Harper and John Wooler approach the caution. I was a sheriff, Tadlatch County, Mississippi. <laughs> I got somebody that's called me Boss Hog. You filling them in? Yeah. Good job. Howdy. We got the call from the Department of Corrections, the parchment that they been an escape at, at the prison. They're not here. I said to my there. deputies immediately responded and began setting up perimeter. That's the way you're going. The circle goes all the way around the prison. Bring him in alive if you can. God bless you. In the beginning, we thought we was going to catch him pretty quick. We were tortured by mosquitoes and the heat. It was afternoon. You hear that? when we first heard the search parties. This way, guys. Spread out. Spread out. As they got closer, it took a lot of willpower to stay put and not make a run for it. We didn't dare move. Not even a finger. they possibly could be. But they are smart. To make a clean getaway, we had to find us a car. We came
came to a house where an elderly couple lived. It was Sunday morning, and sure enough, they got in their car and went to church. Christmas. A kitchen loaded with food. And then there was the guns. Roy, we're in business. Handguns, a shotgun, and a rifle. Oh, well, that's good stuff. Yeah, we need that. going back. No. After a week of sleeping rough in the bug-infested woods, taking a shower was like heaven. JW cooked up a meal. Then we waited. Good job. Food, clothes, and guns at an old couple's home. Now we needed their car. Don't you move. Get in here. We got a call that a delivery man was delivering a package to an elderly couple outside of Wyatt. And he heard some moans and from the inside. dehydrated and they were up in age and it was pretty tough on them. Now tell me what happened. Real okay. slow. Well, <clears throat> they took our car and they took all my husband's guns. All the guns. Yeah. We figured they're gonna rob somebody or have a shootout with a cop somewhere and we just hope some somebody don't get killed. Agent Nielsen. Yeah. The FBI will be called if there is some reason to believe an escapee or fugitive has is, is left the state. Hey guys, listen up. Our day just got very interesting. Two escapees, Woolard and Harper. One's a killer, one's a dangerous armed robber. You know, a huge responsibility at that point. You've got two very, very dangerous people that are on the loose. Which means that I want to know everything about who these guys are. Their friends, their relatives, former girlfriends. We're hoping for a positive lead, some clue, a sighting. I want an agent out to interview each and every one of these individuals immediately. 
Let's get to work, boys. We're waiting basically for him to make a mistake. We stole us some new wheels and headed north. Where to? We weren't sure. Just somewhere we could blend into the background. The idea of returning to the nightmare of Unit 32 was more than either of us could handle. John, I'm never going back to the 32. I hear you're there, brother. You're gonna have to kill me first. But JW was speeding. And just after midnight, everything started going wrong. Roy, we got a cop tailing us. You sure it's us? He's getting closer. It's us. All right, pull over. Come on. JW pulled over. And I handed him the shotgun. What's up, officer? Go, go, go! We're shooting at him! Go! The blast must have just missed the guy's head. The van was pretty slow. Soon the cop was right behind us. Down and off road we went. We swerved and skidded. Bad is crash. 1033. Officer needs assistance now. Damn it! Just keep going. Suddenly, the van came. He backed up. Now we were chasing him, only in reverse. Westbound 231. Westbound 231. Shots being fired. Westbound 231. This is about as serious as you're gonna get in this line of work. You're excited. You're angry. Your adrenaline's pumping through your body like crazy. One of the Indiana State Troopers was able to deploy the stop sticks. That's what forced him off the interstate. You can see sparks flying up as they were trying to maintain control of their van. And ended up in a truck stop. It's amazing that as fast as this is happening, my thought process really slowed down. He'd come up over the hood of the van and I could see that double barrel shotgun. I had, I've discharged my weapon before. I shoot very well. Well, it's at a paper target. <laughs> Much different when you got people actually shooting back at you. It came down to is it gonna be, you know, me or down. JW and me cornered at a truck stop. But there was no way we were going back to prison. We chose not to pursue them because the trucks were giving them uh, cover in areas where they could possibly ambush us. Stressful, very traumatic. Uh, nothing in my career yet has even come close to this. Give me a yeah, another phone. I wasn't happy that there was a shootout, but it was very good information. 
We now know that Willard and Harper are in Indiana. Just want to confirm, is everyone we have in Indiana mobilized? We set up roadblocks, we do canine units, we put up helicopters, we notify the local people. Good. Call me as soon as anything happens. I felt at this point the circle was growing tighter and tighter. They were going to be taken one way or the other. I had just started my shift. 10-4, ETA two minutes. As I was driving around, I see these two guys walking directly toward me. So I was thinking to myself, what if this really is them? And, and I was scared. What do we do? Don't run. Get a little bit closer. You distract. I'll take him out. We knew that they were they were dangerous. We knew that they wouldn't hesitate to kill us. They probably got about 100 feet away, and I looked down at their feet, and they weren't wearing any shoes. They had a bunch of clothing wrapped up around their feet. At that point in time, I knew that these were the guys that we were looking for. A burst of energy came through me. I pulled out my gun and told them, Drop everything in your hands now! My heart was pounding. Hands up now! And I commanded them, put your hands on the hood of my car now. Now! I was just about to tell them to get on the ground when Woolard looked over at Harper and said, I'm running. Harper took his right hand off the fender of the vehicle and was reaching to his waistband. You take a hand off of that fender, I will take it as an act of aggression! And I will shoot you. And I said, do you understand me? Do you understand? And he said, yes, sir. Put your hands on the back of your head. Interlock your fingers. Once backup arrived, we secured Harper by handcuffing him. We then searched him, and uh, we found a nine-shot 22 pistol inside the waistband of, of his pants. I realized then Then that that could have been the last day of my life. <sighs> Capturing Roy Harper was, was probably one of the highlights of my career. <sighs> and no law enforcement were hurt. It was absolute elation. Good news. We got him. Great. Good work. Fantastic job. Fantastic. Bullard and Harper will return to Unit 32, and in my opinion, that's exactly what they deserve.